Hi everyone, let's talk about counting surjections and combinatorics. The main goal is if we have a function g from m to n, we might be wondering how many such functions there are that are surjections. So every element in the range gets hit. And just so you know, this notation n, it refers to the first n positive integers. We're going to be using it a decent amount. So instead of tackling this directly, we're going to be looking at a slightly more general situation. So we'll be looking at functions g mapping from the section m or the initial segment m of the positive integers to the section n such that we have k is less than or equal to n and greater than or equal to 1, which means the section k is a subset of the section n. And every element of the section k gets hit. So that means this section k is a subset of the range of g. And this is, as you can tell, a bit of a more general situation because for k equals to n, uh, we have surjections. We're going to need a couple of tools to prove this formula that we're going to be deriving for the number of such functions. First of all, we need the principle of inclusion-exclusion. So we have that the cardinality of the union from k equals to 1 through n of the ak, so the ak are finite sets, is equal to the following complicated looking sum. We actually let's use, we have, we're already using k, so let's use uh, i over here. So we've got i and i, and over here we have i equals to 1 through n. And now the sum ends are negative 1 to the i plus 1, so we have alternating signs. And inside we have another sum, which goes through the subsets of the section n, such that the cardinality of the subset is equal to i. And the sum ends of that are the intersection of the aj's, where j, little j is an element of big J. So we're going to be needing this formula, the principle of inclusion-exclusion. The second thing we're going to be needing is that the number of to the total number of functions f from the section r to the section s is s to the power of r, and that's because we have we have r positions with s choices in the output for each one. So it's s times s times s r times. So s times s all the way through to s r times. What we're going to be using is pi, so the principle of inclusion exclusion, with complementary counting. How are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is say for i equals to 1, 2, through, through to um, k, we're going we're gonna to say that uh, fi is equal to number of functions g from m to n such that g misses i. So g doesn't hit i in the output, meaning i is not an element of the range of g. And now what we want is for all the i's to get hit. So we just subtract it from the total number of possibilities. So the total number of functions is n to the power of m. 
as we said earlier. And what we do is that we subtract the union, the, the cardinality of the union of the fi, and i goes from 1 through k. And now, as you can tell, we're going to invoke the principle of inclusion-exclusion. That tells us that this is n to the power of m minus the sum i equals to 1 through k, negative 1 to the i plus 1, so alternating signs as before. And we have the inner sum here, j subset the section k with the cardinality of j equals to i. And here inside we take the little j's inside the big A's, fj. So this looks complicated, but we're going to be able to compute this sum and inside the sum and easily. So let's first do n to the power m plus. So this, this minus we can get rid of and turn it into a plus because we can turn the i plus 1 here into just an i. So we have i equals to 1 through k, negative 1 to the i. And we're going to keep the sum as is for now. The j is a subset of k such that the size of j is equal to i. And these these sets or these sum ands here, they are they they're basically saying that uh, i of the numbers don't are not hit in the range. So what we're going to do is find the total number of functions that don't hit those and that is equal to n minus i to the power of m because there used to be n things in the in the in the range we don't hit i of them so we get n minus i and there are m positions in the domain. And since they're all the same and since the number of elements in this sum is k choose i we get that this is equal to n to the power of m plus the sum of i equals to 1 through k of negative 1 to the i k choose i times n minus i to the m and after that we just absorb this term into the sum as a zeroth term and that gives us that gives us uh, the sum from i equals to 0 instead of just 1 of negative 1 to the i, k choose i, n minus i to the m. And you can, you can test that the zeroth term is actually this term over here. Okay, so that, that gives us the formula that we, that we needed. So let's specialize to the case of surjections now. So for surjections, we have k equals to n which implies we have the sum i equals to 0 through n of negative 1 to the i, n choose i, n minus i to the power of m. So that's the surjections formula. And I just want to leave you with one more idea, which is that if over here m is less than k, then we cannot, we can't have, we can't, map from m elements in the domain to k elements in the codomain. It's impossible. So what that means is that in that case the sum that we have above which is i equals to 0 through, through k negative 1 to the power of i k choose i n minus i to the power of m is simply equal to 0. And that's a pretty remarkable formula that we have here. It, it's a bit of a combinatorial identity. And it, it's not just a random one, it does come up in the study of recurrence relations. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.